absolutely tremendous mammoth colossal news coming out of the Red Sea. So let me tell you what the Houthis have been up to. You might recall yesterday I, I gave a brief update on all the fronts, Lebanon, Yemen, and Iraq, and I told you that the Yemenis struck a U.S. destroyer called the USS Gravely. Well, guess what? They've been very busy during the last 72 hours, and I'll tell you uh, just exactly what they have gotten uh, up to. So, number one, British ships. They have struck a British ship called Hope Island. This was struck in the Red Sea. Pay attention. Next, Israeli ships. Two Israeli ships, one of them called MSC Grace F and MSC Gina, struck in the Indian Ocean and the Arabian Sea, respectively. Third, U.S. ships. The Yemenis, the uh, Houthis, Ansar Allah struck frigates, uh, basically U.S. warships, in the, inside the Red Sea, and they did this with drones. The, the ships I just told you about, the Israeli and British ships, were struck with anti-ship uh, anti ballistic missiles, whereas for the U.S. destroyers, they used their drones. So you have all these elements of the Yemeni armed forces uh, deployed in order to maintain the blockade. And this is so, so colossal, and it shows you how weak the West is. I mean, the Royal Air Force, what is our Air Force doing in Yemen in the first place? Number one. Number two, what objectives have they achieved? The only thing they've achieved is to make money for the arms dealers, for the weapons contractors and manufacturers. That's it. Because every Yemeni drone that is fired uh, costs around 17,000. That's a, that's a very um, conservative estimate, okay? Let's say it's 17,000. Well, guess what? A, a Sea Viper missile, which is what the... Uh, the Royal Navy use, what our Royal Navy uses, costs a million pounds. A million pounds. If you look at the, the US Navy, their, their countermeasures, two million dollars per missile to shoot down a $17,000 drone. I mean, it, <laughs> this is a losing strategy. Number one, it's an imperialist strategy. It's illegal, it's immoral. But on top of that, it's just plain dumb from a military objective strategic point of view and the fact that the Yemenis I mean just again look at the map and and look how far and broad and sweeping their reach is today in 2024 the Yemenis are able to strike all the way from Yemen into the Bab el Mendeb Strait into the Red Sea up into Eliat into the Gulf of Aden the Arabian Sea and the Indian Ocean. I mean, this is checkmate. Checkmate. The Israelis and then afterwards uh, our government and the Americans thought that, well, we can just bomb the Yemenis and then everything will be fine. And if they, they put up a, a fight and there's a blockade, we can just go around Africa like the good old days. Again, that's, the, that's kind of the ironic thing is that Yemen have set back Western trade by 200 years. Because you've got to go around Africa all the way like this. Instead of sailing up into the Suez Canal, saving time and costs. But no, 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 no. You're not going anywhere. You see, now the Yemenis, they can get you in the Indian Ocean. On your way around Africa. Now again... Let's, let's be very clear, they're not interested in taking lives. This is not the objective. And, and this is, you know, the fact that only three uh, perished. And again, it's very sad. It, it, it was an accident, but it's a testament to the Yemenis' respect for human life. They actually tried to avoid civilian casualties. Where, whereas the Americans, the first thing they did when they showed up is they killed 10 Yemeni Marines. This is truly significant. The training, the equipment that one must acquire and possess in order to be able to uh, Im implement such a blockade with such a wide radius. I mean, once again, look at the map. Look at the reach Yemenis have, being able to hit people in the Indian Ocean. And when I say people, again, let's be very clear. The Yemenis are not only not interested in targeting civilians, not only that, but also they are not interested in 
ships that have nothing to do with Britain, America, or Israel. As a matter of fact, this, this was only about Israel in the beginning, but when Britain and America attacked Yemen, well, they responded in kind by adding us to the blockade. But uh, other ships can pass freely without any problem, right? So just like America loves to take unilateral decisions and impose illegal sanctions on other people, well, Yemen are also taking a unilateral decision. But the difference is that it is actually legal because Article 1 of the Genocide Convention stipulates that you must, you must prevent others from committing genocide. And that is exactly what Yemen are doing. They want to free the Palestinians and to save their lives. It's all about saving lives. Nevertheless, from a purely, a purely objective point of view, a purely strategic or military point of view, what we are seeing in the region is the decline of the West. They are unable to contend with the resistance. They are unable to contend with them. That's why you never hear or any of this. You never hear of what's happening in, in Iraq, in Yemen, in Syria, in Lebanon, on the news, because they are so embarrassed. It is so humiliating. The Royal Navy <laughs> and the U.S. Navy and the, their air forces made to look like fools. Well, we shouldn't be there in the first place, should we? Let me tell you something. The newspapers are really having a laugh with this one. Look at the headlines that they have put out. This one, for example, is from Euronews, and it says Yemen's Houthis say, say they launched missiles and rockets at Western ships. Well, what do you say? I, I know what the Houthis say, but what do you say? You, you claim to be journalists, right? So what happened? Did you bother finding out? This is, let me explain something to you, okay? Another journalism uh, uh, tip or class. In the Western media, when they write things like this, or they write, for example, according to Syrian state media, this is after they have poisoned people's minds. They have made them uh, xenophobic and fearful and filled with hate and contempt towards uh, Syria or, or Palestine or Hamas. And so anything related to those words, to, to countries, elicits a negative emotional response when pronounced. And so when you say the Hamas run health ministry, it's basically like casting, uh, casting doubt uh, on the figures that are trusted by the UN and, and every other NGO in the world. But that's how the media operate. They want to instill doubt and paranoia and fear inside of you and make you question the figures because they're true, because they are so outrageous. And so this is another way of doing that, right? Well, the Houthis say they fired the missiles, uh, but we don't know because it's so embarrassing. Oh, they know. They know. And they hate it. Again, this is quite the feat. This is quite the accomplishment. Having such a wide radius such a large area of operations. It's quite distinctive. It's quite extraordinary. And remember the precision that you need, the kinds of weapon systems that you need, the missiles and drones, and the training that, you, that one must acquire in order to, be, to execute such a naval blockade. This comes from people like the Iranians. The Iranians, because of US sanctions, because they have been attacked, by the Americans. They have learned to thrive despite the sanctions. Look at their missile program, for example. Again, regardless what you think about Iran or what you think about the Yemenis, about the Houthis, from a purely objective point of view, they are going up, they are progressing in their military uh, exploits and their training and their equipment, and the West is in decline. And not just militarily, but economically, politically, Diplomatically, our image has been destroyed, and it's because of the weapons contractors, the weapons manufacturers, and the devils who lurk around Whitehall and Washington, D.C.